So where you are now, this is really what my main work is, which is teaching theology to mainly ministry students in the University of Livingstone. Uh, actually teaching has become a smaller part of my work here because I'm acting Dean of Academic Affairs, which is kind of a grand term for being chief organizer of stuff, like writing timetables and basically anything that needs done on an organizational basis falls in my lap, including more interesting things like developing programs and making sure that our, our teaching is actually being beneficial to the students and trying to keep trying to keep a certain standard in terms of lecture attendance and even with students how they how they kind of get their work in on time so there's a mon mundane aspect to it but the, the more exciting part for me is actually studying and delivering courses teaching hebrew to old testament greek new testament um, and i learn so much actually like through through that teaching so when i'm teaching the students usually I've just been writing the course beforehand and so it's that thing of you still have that little passion and excitement because you've been learning it yourself. So that's the main work I have and at college there's actually a variety of things which I do day to day. It's mainly college, um, that's why I'm here, that's why PCI has sent me. What brought me to Malawi in the first place, I actually, well, I actually just love the beauty of the place at first. And then there was also the issue of poverty, as I saw it. And I don't even really like the word poverty anymore because it's like saying people are poor here and we're not. But it's inequality, I'd say. And just the fact is, so much stuff is easy for me. I've got money, and other people um, suffer for lack of it. So I've always been involved with a certain amount of poverty alleviation, is not the right way to put it. I suppose just helping people, uh, community work you might say, with individuals especially. And so I would, I can't even count how many, but I'd be helping a number with fees. Some of the money comes from PCI, most of it actually comes from um, different people within PCI, somewhere down the line. And I don't like to just give money, I like to have an actual relationship with the person I'm helping. So it's usually got a discipleship element, so if I'm helping someone especially a young kid at school, then they'll come around every now and again, we'll sit together and talk about how school's going. If they're Christians, we read and pray together. If they're not Christians, I, I try to talk to them, try to tell them about Christ. And that takes sometimes more time <laughs> than the teaching. I'm also involved a little bit with, there's people I'm helping in, in non-academic, kind of academic, non-school ways. So for helping with fertilizer around harvest time. Um, what tends to happen is if you meet someone and help them, then that they can regularly come back for different things. And one of the biggest things I'm thinking about now is actually how to do this in a, in a good way. Because I've realized as much as I like to try to help people, often I've done stuff which doesn't really help. It can perpetuate problems. And so all kinds of different things, whether it's hospital, hospital emergencies, whether it's like um, food crises, where someone's just had a new baby and they're not sure how they're going to look after, they don't have resources. Those are the kind of things which, which people would come to for help and um, you get involved. And one of the big things I can say is, looking back on it, the people I'm involved with really are the displaced people or the vulnerable people for different reasons. So a bando works in a garden, he's from another place, he's, he's physically not well, and he, he doesn't have family here, he doesn't have his own land, so he's vulnerable. Orphans, get involved with orphans. I didn't know they were orphans at the beginning, but it turns out they're the ones I'm most involved with. And there's a lot of people, I suppose, that for one reason or another, they're vulnerable, so they haven't got a strong place in society, and I've become involved with them. Um, I think the first thing is that uh, I really love it, like I'm passionate about what God's given me to do. And so it's not, it doesn't always feel just like coping. It's like I wake up in the morning and I'm, I don't have to be dragged out of bed because I know I'm here for a reason and I'm passionate about it. And, you know, in, in God's will I chose to come 
no one forced me to. So I know why I'm here. And I think that's the first thing. That it's real, it's a privilege, you know, it's a privilege to, to, to be able to serve this way. I love teaching theology, I love reading theology, I love having a chance. You know, I'm, I'm teaching ministers, I'm not even a minister, but I have this chance of teaching ministers, which is a big, it's, it's a big responsibility as well. So it's not just a privilege, but it's that weight of knowing, like, these guys are going to use my material out in the field, teaching hundreds of people, thousands of people in time. That's, that's a big side of it. The other side is the grace of just having physical health. Because I have physical health, and because, um, probably because I'm single, I don't have kids to look after, I don't have all the other things which come with married life, I haven't been ill, uh, I've really just been given strength, I don't have problems at home, the woman who helps me in the house with stuff is just brilliant, She's, there's no problems with her, and so like I employ her to do a lot of stuff that I would take four days to do, and she does it in four hours. <laughs> And so all these little things mean that I can do a lot of different things. Um, and I think what the Lord also does is He doesn't put everything on my plate at once. So like maybe for two months I've got to concentrate just on teaching. And then there's like a wave of more social action issues that come. And then there's more time with people in evangelism which takes up time and praying energy. So not everything falls on me at once. Again, it's not something I can control. Mm. I think, again, starting with, with college itself, uh, it's not an easy thing to quantify because we teach these guys, sometimes women, a couple of uh, graduated just recently, and we don't know exactly what happens in the parish, in the field. And so it's not an easy thing just to say, I can give you like a set of results. But the longer I'm here, the more contact I'm getting with former students. And there's like a, a relationship which has been developed there, which shows that they appreciated what was taught. I get real encouragement from a couple of students that tell me, oh, I'm using your notes. One of them was telling me the other day that every time he preaches revelation, he's using my notes on revelation, which is, it's actually a really deep privilege to be told that and I'm not sure I would use my own notes <laughs> if I was preaching on Revelation um, but they don't have much else to use often and those are the notes that they've been taught so when they read them it makes sense so God's definitely going to work in that very stable sense specific there's three guys who used to hang around together sell art together and they were just, especially two of them were really cheap people, they were just cheap people get money, drink the money away at the end of the day. All three now are real strong Christians, and these are three of the people I've been most involved with. And for me, like that's, it's happened slowly. They didn't have dramatic conversions, and one of them especially took a long time before I was really convinced he was a Christian group. But what I've seen is massive grace and transformation of these lives, all three of them orphans, all three of them guys that just really weren't, weren't loved much as they grew up for different reasons. Yet they're, they're strong Christians to them, married, um, struggling, really struggling, but they're struggling in Christ. And that's what more can you ask for seeing God's work than that? The first thing is definitely that I myself am close to Christ because the temptation is always to, to get sucked into doing everything rather than actually being near to God the way He wants us to love Him. And you can find people that are very highly thought of, um, I know other people high up in the NGO world or missionary world and they're doing so much stuff and everyone says, look at that person. And it's easy to be that sort of person that, that tries to do a lot of things. But to actually stay close to Christ has to be the first thing, and that's what I can often drift on, because you can get kidded into thinking life's about something else. Second thing would be, for the, for the college, we're actually a faculty of theology now, um, not even college of theology, to really step up how we, we work, how we teach theology, how we train ministers. 
definitely how we, we pray together as a faculty because we could be so much more intense in our, our kind of spiritual work here. Um, but there been a lot of changes happening and in some ways the department we've been a little bit passive to these changes and I think we, we really need prayer to step up so as we begin next year the, tr the ministers coming for training know that they're in a place where they're going to be for three years and they'll really be prepared to, to preach words and sacrament final thing is wisdom not just for myself but for all of us as, as missionaries especially in Equindeni the situation we're in means that we're confronted with, with huge inequality and people who, who live with so much less than us how do we deal with that? Do we just chuck out money left, right and centre? Um, do we make programs? Do, what do we actually do? What, what's God calling us to actually do to address something which is just wrong? Like injustice is wrong, but how do we address it? Yeah, I'm going